Hi, everyone. I'm Britt. I'm the founder of Celestial Citizen, and uh, I'm joined here with Bailey Burns, a good friend of mine. We do these little reaction videos um, every couple of Fridays. We release them on YouTube where we film our reactions and hot takes to the For All Mankind show. And we're currently going through season one. We're going to go episode by episode, and we hope that you will uh, watch along with us. Bailey has never seen this show before, so you're getting like her real-time reaction. I have seen it once before, but I'm still I'm still super into this show regardless. And like, I don't great, know. You do a great job of pretending like you've never seen it Thank before. You. you don't spoil anything. <laughs> I feel like I'm working working on my own acting skills right Good. now as yeah. well. So like, you know, case, trying yeah. to, yeah. Also, you do, you know, you watch it, you get more out of it every time. So I love this show. Spoiler alert. And I'd be more than happy to watch this like over and over again. So anyway, um, Bailey. Have my moon, buddy. I'm ready to go. Okay. So this episode's name is Nixon's Women. All right. So on. before you start, yeah. Nixon's Women sounds very sexist. So I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> yeah. For all mankind, Nixon's Women. Yikes. Not off the <laughs> Episode three. Uh-oh. I have high faith, but here we go. That's a cool female blend. pilot. Is it a female pilot? Female pilot. That's really cute. Is he married? Um, not at this moment. No, he okay. is not. In that case, I approve. I ship it. Let's go. You'll love this part. Don't worry about a thing, okay? I'm right here with you. Oh, so condescending. I guess that's why women don't have pockets in their clothes either, because it's just we don't need to worry them with that. We don't have to worry about thing. it. Yeah. We don't need to worry about utility. Fun fact, I'm wearing men like men's sweats right now because they have better pockets, like hands down. He's like, what? <laughs> get it, girl! Get it! Get it, Tracy! Can you imagine how freaked out he was thinking she didn't know how to fly? I hate that it's like in a flirty manner, but I love it. Like, women know yeah. how to fly. <laughs> This couple has like a very interesting saga. So remember, okay. he was the one, he was the one that cheated on her with the toilet flush. Yeah, which like she deserves better. We all know that. Okay, so see what I think it is, is I think that they were like, okay, like I'm gonna like lock down who I think is like the best. Like, like the top ish. of the top. Yeah. Yeah. And then basically then they were but then they like always assumed that they'd be able to get away with cheating. And so they were like, okay, well, this is no big deal. I'll just go and like do this. I don't even think they really thought about it. Look at that moon map. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm studying a lot of moon maps lately. So gorgeous. <laughs> I like how all these men are like so put out. They're like, oh, that's not hierarchy. That's not the way this works. And they do this like awkward silence. They never say anything about it. They just like. Yeah, they're just like, hmm. Equals the Soviets and its great achievement of landing a woman on the moon. And we don't have any female astronauts. Well, I think he's aware every newspaper. How did that happen? Yeah. How did that happen? Mercury 13. Let's go on a rant after this is done. Well, just find a nice enough looking lady pilot. Put her in a No! Teach her to walk down the goddamn ladder and take her picture. Nobody. No! Gets into a spacecraft in this program that I haven't certified. The woman should be qualified properly, not a pretty face that can walk down a ladder. It's a woman that is qualified that can also be. Hoo, hoo. They called out John Glenn for yes. not wanting this to take place. Thoughts yes. on that, Bailey? John Glenn was the pretty boy. He was the crowd favorite. It was in um, Hidden Figures. It shows him actually going to shake the hands of the African-American women. Like, it shows John Glenn was kind of like a peacekeeper. You know what I mean? He did a lot for different groups, including women. Like, he was a good guy, if you ask me. Like, he was the one, a lot of the times, he was shown as the one that was not necessarily cheating on his wife. John Glenn was kind of the all-American hero. I very much respect, look up to him. He was a great astronaut, you know, great pilot, great astronaut. But he is one of the number one reasons the Mercury 13 did not fly. He did actively testify against them, saying women had no place in space, essentially. And it's one of those hard things for me personally, where I have to separate the two. I genuinely do. Of like, great space figure, uh -huh. 
women's history. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think you have to be able to separate these things partially because of the era of like understanding that they probably didn't have the full picture yet. And partially just like, you have to respect what he did, but you also have to acknowledge that he was one of the people that actively spoke out against the Mercury 13. He literally, there was two of the Mercury 13 who went to court to testify on behalf of the Mercury 13. And he was on the defense against that he literally yeah. spoke out against women in space like this literally happened it wasn't like you can argue this he literally said i do not believe women should be in space ultimately his influence was so important and like the fact that he carried this like very sexist like protector of women i just feel like that mentality then was carried on in like many different realms. Yes. And so it's just like, I don't know. It's like really hard for me because I just like cannot get around it. I cannot get around it. <laughs> like I said, um, I have to literally separate it in my mind. Like I have yeah. to, because it's hard. I respect him as an astronaut. I have a hard time with his views on women. Hard, like yeah. seriously. Molly Cobb set aviation records for long distance solo flight, won several racing awards, qualified in single and multi-engine. Did they say Molly Cobb? Yeah. Her name was Jerry Cobb. Time out if you're watching this right now, which you should be still. Uh, Jerry Cobb is an amazing figure in the Mercury 13. She was one of the leading activists who testified. She was like kind of the leader. She actually had to go up a lot of backlash from another female in the pilot industry, um, which you guys should look into. As I talk about a lot, how I receive a lot of backlash from women above me. This is kind of what happened to her. Um, it's not Molly Cobb. It's Jerry Cobb. Why does it set that straight? Look her up. She's an amazing human being. Okay. All <laughs> right. Yes. Here we go. Enticing woman to be America's first moon maiden. Moon maiden? Oh, I do not like moon maiden. Let's not stop that right now. Let's right here, right end now. to end. That, Let's not like, pick that moon up ever maiden again. Sounds like handmaiden. Handmaiden's yes. tale. I am still scarred from watching season one of that. Okay. Fair. No moon maidens. <laughs> no None. moon maiden. Oh, Patty Doyle. Her name wasn't Patty. I recognize Doyle, but her name wasn't Patty. I wonder why they changed the names on this. I do too. I'm not letting her in just because she's black. That's exactly why you're letting her in. Oh my God. I'm so sick of the token. Like she sh probably deserves it, but the tokenism of she, black. Yeah, she also, by the way, like, okay, I don't want to spoil it, but like, she's a really great character on this show. And like, yeah, she 100% deserves it. She's a mother, for Christ's sake. How's she going to manage that? Get her a nanny. I am offended by that statement. Yeah, he's got to stop cheating. Let's be real. Yeah, but also, are we really considering keeping a woman out of the astronaut program because her husband cheats on her, and it would be unfortunate if that came to light? <clears throat> yes, I'll do it. Yes. Get it, girl. You don't need your husband's you. permission. You go no. do it. You do that. Yeah. Shake that head. Yes. So he got a crew slot to support her. I'm so frustrated. I'm so conflicted. Oh, Ooh. <laughs> Karen is not happy. Ed, they are making a mockery of what you do. I'm angry that this is coming from a woman. I think she's jealous, to be honest. I, th I think she's jealous. You're right. I think she's like, why couldn't that be me? I agree. I don't even know if it's like, why couldn't that be me? I almost think it's more like, what am I if like, this is now like what other women are doing? You know what I mean? Although I do really love the dresses from the 1960s. I wish I could wear them more often. I think they're just like super clean looking. I love it. Except like the dry cleaning bills. True. Right. <laughs> Yikes. I like literally don't buy Ooh. clothes if they have to be dry clean. Congratulations. As of this moment, you are officially astronaut candidates. Affectionately referred to from this point on as ass can. <laughs> Proudly. He's like, oh, they laugh. He like I, dream, I dream to be an ass can one day. Is that still what they call them? Yep. To the day. It would be so cool to be in this program and just be like NASA. Teach me, like, Teach give me, me everything all. you know. Put the information in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's just like literally like, let's just simmer in it. I bet by the time that we're like 50 though, like legitimately so many people will be going to space. Not a big deal. It's gonna be like flying. Like, you know how you take a flight? 
God, I love the astronaut aviators. Can we talk about that for a second? I want a pair. Oh my God. These are nice. Apple, you know, we could have a nice little like co, I don't know what we would call it, sponsorship, co-partnership. Yeah, let's partner with Apple. Let's That's do a good this. idea. I feel like this escalated really quickly. Like, do I just not know enough about this? But like, I feel like, what are, are those F6, F-16s? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I think F-16s, those are very yeah. fast. Yeah. That would be like, that would be tough to fly, right? Like much harder than like a propeller plane. Like, I don't know. I would be nervous. Yeah. I don't know. I think, you know, if you're smart, you can probably, I want to fly in a plane where I have to wear an oxygen mask because of how high I'm going. Have you noticed, though, like in Star Wars, how like when they're in their fighter planes, like they don't, most of them don't have oxygen masks, right? Different technology, okay. <laughs> and yet they were very getting shot strong at. atmosphere, good Eclipse system. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want, I want a NASA jumpsuit so bad. Oh, the guilt, the mom guilt. Mom guilt, for sure. I feel it all the time. <laughs> I know you do because of like how you try to back out of meetings and stuff like that. You're like, oh, I have, no, you don't need to. Okay, Britt, you don't need to. I really like going down to tell my kids, oh, 592 ran long again. Get it, Jerry. <laughs> Molly, Molly Cobb, based off of Jerry Cobb. Get it, girl. Yes. Get it, Jerry Cobb, base character. Although to be fair, I'm looking at that right now. That doesn't look like that complicated of math. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> So I did that big bang theory season one. I looked at it and I was like, this is fizz one at best. Come on. Like, <laughs> oh, yikes. That's so demeaning to put it up like that though. Grades shouldn't matter. If you read the story of the mercury 13, they literally did work their butts off, you know? So for it to be just handed to them and they're the only two there, I get it. Yeah. And just hand it to them. Let me let me rephrase that. Like it was never yeah. just handed to someone in this position. Can I just say I love Tracy's new look with her hair pulled back in the ponytail every time we see her? I love that look. <laughs> and she's rocking a low pony. You know how hard it is to rock a low pony? Good for her. You get it, Tracy. Jerry was rough around the edges. I get it. I get this. This character, they nailed it. I love it. But the thing is, is like I totally can like understand though. Like it's it's like very off-putting like when you get that much aggressive like energy from like another female another you know what I mean? oh, you're I like, get it. I, why don't we support each other you know I get it. and then it's like I get it completely no like margo though like her tact i feel like i like support right because ultimately she's not singling anybody out this is not a personal thing it's like that- you need to be prepared because i want you women to succeed i agree and that's the way it should be it's like I tough agree. love come on tracy you got it Oh dear. I want to do this so bad. Like, I can't even tell you how bad I want to run simulations and try to figure out problems that go wrong. Oh, I know why I'm here. I know why Patty's here. And Danielle's Danny like, oh, everyone except for you. This is Astro awkward. Wife. Why are you still Astro here? wife? I don't like that. Me neither. And this is the, the women on women in STEM thing that I'm talking about. This is exactly yeah. it. Do not condone violence. Agreed. I said, get the fuck out! Jesus. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Oh, yeah. Bleep, bleep. Ah! I need a second. I feel this in my heart. I feel everything. Ray, how sure are you that those bright spots are really ice? I'm not. I can't be. It's just one of the possibilities the data suggests. The instrument. Water on the moon! No! Water on the moon. We can use it to make rocket fuel. Rocket fuel! <laughs> this changes everything. Game changer! Well, I mean, the whole, like, ISRU really started in the 70s, so this is right on track with that. Like, people think this whole reusable ISRU stuff is recent. It started back in the 70s. Actually, people started, like, talking about it before even the Apollo, like, touched down, like, 50s, 60s. Like, this is not a new thing. I'm so glad they're talking about this. This is literally, like, if you talk about a plot twist in real life history is when they figured out there was water on the moon. Based on what you're saying, though, and based on when, like the outer space treaty was written and like the moon agreement 
like how much do we think that space resources actually directly led to the failure of the moon agreement? One of the ultimate reasons the moon treaty failed is because it doesn't support capitalism. And regardless of what you say, capitalism is how the world works right now, whether you agree with it, what, whether you and don't. And certainly back then. And especially back then, even more so back then, I agree. And so people who are like, I, what, are you, what are you saying? I have to share the money I could make from this. I have to share the resources I can make from this. So the moon agreement, like, I don't know, I feel like failed is a really like relative term as well. People did sign it. Like but eight people, eight but countries. like <laughs> most of the major like space faring countries at that time did not, including yes. the U.S. I guess the thing that's interesting about that is like 1979, that was also like then going into the 80s, which was like capitalism on steroids. Yeah, I, though, I'm just going to say it. I, I love the moon agreement. Do you? Interesting. I'm like, OK, I interesting. see. I see. I see that there are things we have to figure out. But I love the, like, I love where it came from. Like, I love, like, the place it was coming from. And, like, personally, I'm really interested to see, like, what a post-capitalist world looks like. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I am not, I, I will openly say that I am not a fan of the moon agreements. This sounds like a conversation we should have sometime. Because we both come from a place of kindness in our hearts. You know what I mean? Like, we both are good people. We recognize each other's good peopleness. So this would be an interesting conversation. Well, and look, like the, for me, I'm like, the thing is, is that like, whether you like it or not, or you like where it came from, like it obviously did not take hold. So we obviously need to like, we obviously need to like figure that out going forward. But I, I wonder if there's things that we can pull from it. I agree. And I think like T.O. for a second, if you're a space law person and you're listening in on this right now, you should consider where the scientists were at in their understanding of ISRU pre and post Apollo 11. I, know. I feel like that could be a really interesting thesis. I think, I think that'd be a really interesting study. If you need a PhD topic right there, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll look You'll up be glad. You'll be glad you watched this reaction video for sure. <laughs> if they can't survive the desert, they can't survive the moon. I mean, that's, a, that's a point. Yeah, that's a point. <laughs> okay, hold on. There was, <laughs> there was this one time when I was, like, visiting L.A. for something. And I'm going to, like, withhold the specifics and details and names Good. to, like, okay. keep everyone's privacy. Confidentiality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But literally, like, part of the, like, event involved, like, going to visit Griffith. And I had never been before. And I was like, oh, I really would like to go. Like, that sounds great. You know, there was only one other person who wanted to go with. And it was, like, at close to closing. And it was, like, getting dark. And also did not realize that like there were not taxis that would like come up there. Right. And so basically I assumed I'd have the ability to call an Uber or something like that, but with no cell service, this was not a thing. No. And anyway, oh, yeah. it was like, so basically we were like stranded up there and literally like this guy that I was with, who like, I barely knew. He literally started being like, well, let's just camp out and let's, like, we'll view this as a test for like how we'd have to survive on Mars someday. And okay. I was like, that is a dumb statement. Like there are mountain lions out here. There are like rattlesnakes in Southern California. Literally, like I would like to give myself the opportunity to maybe go to the moon someday and not so die prove, tonight. Let's prove yeah. that we can get, there's so, no moon rattlesnakes, by the way, don't worry. That's good to know. Yes. That's good to know. Okay. <laughs> that is a relief. But so the point is, is that basically like these people who are like, oh, I'm going to be like a survivalist out here. And like, do, like, that's a great way to die. Like earth is a benign environment for the most part, except for the areas in which we have screwed it up. And then it's kind of kicking us back. And I understand. Okay. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay? yeah. <laughs> but the point is, is that like, save your energy for the big show. You know, the big show is, is the moon and is Mars. I'm not saying there's not things we can like test out and do. I'm all for analogs. Okay. But like the analogs are like also controlled environments to a certain extent, right? They're oh, okay. not just like, they're not just like here, go out into the woods with nothing and a phone that doesn't work and just like, see if you survive. Like, no, that's not. So anyway, and I agree. It's, it's a different thing. They're testing. I agree completely. You got home. That's all I'm saying. <laughs>
any any mission you can walk away from is a success, right? That's a Didn't success. you say that no, in the I last agree. episode? <laughs> this is not repeat. Not what do you think the worst part of that would be? Assignment. Like the heat or the, the backpack? Will be timed and graded on your individual performance. Heat. I think I would hate the heat. There's no rattlesnakes on the moon. We went over this. There are none. But there were snakes on planes. So I've never done a survival activity like this, but I feel like the worst part of it would be me second guessing myself. Like, I feel like I would know what to do, but then I would second guess it. I think I need to go with my gut. I think that's one of the biggest Bailey lessons I need to learn for this decade. I actually really like endurance stuff. This is going to make me sound weird, but like running like super, super long distances is like kind of my jam because I just like knowing that I can. Uh Oh, don't lose the water, Tracy, 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 girl. She needs to get it together. Girl, you're better than that. That was, that was a rookie mistake. Come on, girl. Could you imagine if you like did that on the moon too? <laughs> you like go to all this ever, you like mine the water rice and then you're just like, oh, oops. <laughs> My bad guys. All right. Get it, Cobbs. over again. <laughs> let's, let's try this again. <laughs> so I was wondering when you'd get around to reading me something. Also, is drinking beer the best for the hydration? Probably not. No. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't recommend that. Oh, my God. I resonate so much with the character of Tracy. Like, all of my insecurities are putting being put into this character. <laughs> like, plus, I love how she rocks a low ponytail. I cannot get over it. I want to rock a low ponytail like her. Now, if you'll remember, Tracy is a nurse by trade. So, useful skill set here. Fun fact, I took a athletic rapping class in high school and I still use those skills to date my spidey senses are tangling right now like seriously like if there's a value to Tracy it is the fact that she's caring about this other person it's the fact that she's trying to get her mind off of the situation they're in right now and building like a personal connection like Mm -hmm. this is the girl you want on your mission that's all I'm saying like yes this is NASA checkpoint one to all candidates still on the course. You are ordered to check in immediately. Please respond. Over. Don't have to shout, Zeke. <laughs> 112%. Once again, though, Tracy, with the misuse of water, okay? Better <laughs> Can we talk strong, about this? <laughs> you need to be a little more careful with the water rations. Keep on dreaming. Love, Lorraine, and Janice. Dear Miss Waverly, dear Danielle. I'm gonna like get emotional. I'm like actually tearing up, you guys. Yes, Gloria Steinem. You have become a big inspiration in my life. My parents always told me that I could be anything I wanted when I grew up, but I never really believed them. I want when we tell little girls that they can be anything, that like we actually we make that happen. We know it's not true right now. And so it's like, we need to make sure that we're telling them the truth. You just don't have the skill set, Tracy. No. This stuff isn't like riding a bike. Here's what annoys me is like men acting like, oh, I'm doing you a favor. Like I'm doing you a favor by like- Giving you an out, yeah. Yeah, like giving you an out. Like, I don't think you're cut out for this is so damaging. But you have to know, they did do this. This was the political game. They did this with the guys as well. How do they wrap their hair around the ponytail holder to look so perfect? I love her low pony. I cannot get over this. He's drinking beer and driving at the Please same time. Please don't drink and drive. Celestial Please citizens, do don't drink okay. and drive. <laughs> Things we have learned from this show so far in prior episodes, we do not condone animal violence, okay? We do not condone drinking and driving. And, and conserve honestly, your water. Yeah. Conserve, conserve your water. Conserve your water. <laughs> You're right, Bailey. Such an important point. She's okay. She's okay. There's someone else. No, I don't want to be anyone else either. You know, I hope everyone's okay. Patty Doyle. Did she die? Is she gone? Yeah. Well, they had to kill someone. They had to show that it was dangerous. This is going to obviously cause disrupt in, like, should women even be allowed to do this? This is obviously the controversial tar- topic there. I don't know. Is it just me? Or I'm like, my, I would like my husband to like not assume that I was the one that like screwed up and died. I appreciate the concern for sure. But like, I guess like, I'm kind of like, I don't know. Like, why do we think it's like, why do we automatically assume it's Tracy? 
I just remember like specifically what comes to mind for me at least is the STEM school shooting happened in my hometown and oh. specifically when that happened my mind immediately went to my mom because she worked down the street from where this happened and then it went to the kids that I knew at the school and it was like none of them were hurt none of them were involved obviously but mm my mind's immediately went to them. So it's like, if you know someone's in the vicinity, I don't think it's crazy for your mind to go to that immediately. I think it's a natural yeah. connection. So for me, at least, I understand where you're coming from. I agree. I would want my partner to have a lot more faith in me that I can handle things. But me as someone who has gone through stuff where it's like, I immediately go to like, where are my loved ones? Where are the ones that I know? Where like, can I make sure they're safe before I worry about what's going on with this scene? On the whole, are we happy the reaction this like program is going for these yes. women astronauts? Well, I agree. Women should be going to the moon, but I don't yeah. want it to be a token woman going to the moon. And I very yeah. much believe in this, like the person who is best equipped for the job should get the job. And what we need to do is to equip more and a diverse group of people to be ready for this job, to be pulled from, from this pool. But like, the person for this job, we should have confidence that they are ready for this job. I don't want any more of this tokenism anymore. And I feel yeah. like what's happening in this episode, you can see it is even NASA, honestly, it doesn't feel like NASA believes in them. It feels like they're doing this because they have to get ahead of Russia. The two men who got to be like the, um, the first on like the like crew dragon capsule or whatever, like last summer. Bob and Doug. Yeah. But like, aren't literally both of their wives astronauts? Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal that okay. they so like so. This is my Astro question, families. though: is like, aren't there? But there are qual like there are other qualified individuals that could have had that first, mm-hmm. right? You know, so like that's my yeah. I guess but like that's but they, you needed like a pilot. Those were those were specifically that, and I agree the the Crew Dragon one that should be a test pilot role because you need people who have gone under extreme circumstances. So neither of those women were test pilots. I think they were both mission specialists. I think that being said, there's other female pilots. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's not, I'm not saying, I just don't think their wives would have been the ones to replace them. You know, I think you have to think about the role that they have. Yeah. And actually, you know, NASA is opting their standards. Now you have to have a master's of science, not just a BS, but you have to have a MS. So, and see, and like, this is the whole like trickle down effect of like, we've already realized that like the GRE and like other standardized tests are like super like racist and like yes, very like, unfair. towards a specific group. Yep. I agree. And, like, and it's just like the, like the threshold that it like, that you have to go through to get into these programs, like the money that you have to be able to like have to even just like pay for like the resources for like studying for different tests and things like that. Like it's all kind of like filters, right. That are placed on people. We are still so based on like a letters of recommendation policy (laughs) and like those letters of recommendation have to come most of the time from white men. So if they have any kind of a bias, if they have any kind of like any reason not to like think of you super fondly, or maybe we all know this is true. When you meet someone younger than you, who you feel like you see a little bit of yourself in, right? Like you naturally try to help that person. Like it's kind of this weird, like egotistical thing we do. Right. And I'm not necessarily saying that's wrong, but the problem is, is like when the only people in power all kind of look the same. And then they're also like have this bias towards other people that remind them of themselves. Then it's just naturally like keeps people out. Like, it's great to see the next woman or the first woman and the next man going to the moon. That's great. But if you actually want to see change, that in of itself is not going to be what instills change. It's going to be getting funding and scholarships to the people who need it. It's, It's happening down here at the lower level. And when you start trying to attack all these like big picture issues of, uh, sexism, racism, those kind of things, especially in STEM, you can't be focusing on who goes to the moon. Those people have already put in their time. You have to be focusing on who's getting the education, who's getting the opportunities down here to build up to those. So Cyan Proctor, for example, right? Like she went through, but she went through all that training, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, this is the thing is like, she should be on NASA's Rolodex, right? To be like, oh, let's call her. Oh, Rolodex is like a very old phrase. I just used there. But anyway, <laughs> but the point is, is like, I'm not that old people. I just know it. I've heard my parents talk about it. Okay. I don't actually know what a Rolodex is, but the point is why wouldn't she have been selected for something from NASA? Like, why did it have to go to like inspiration for? 
I don't want to tell Cyan's story for her, but sure, one of the yeah. things that she's of told course. me is that she does feel that NASA only had room for one African American female in their selection. And they went, if you look at the 2009 selection, they went with a different African American female. And so I think this is a very good example of kind of the inherent problems of yeah. They, yeah, they had like, two people who were qualified. Yeah, why not put but, both in the program? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is, I agree. This is gonna get controversial. <laughs> I feel like they don't actually want to take a real hard look at their structure. And so mm-hmm. the problem is, is I think until you really like are okay with being uncomfortable with like owning up to stuff, I think it's like hard to actually find change. I guess my point is, is that like it doesn't surprise me to hear you say that it's Mm -hmm. like, there would be this kind of like, oh, well, there's like one kind of like slot because I feel like that's what women deal with all the time. I agree. Kind of know that there's only going to be like a handful of slots. So it's like, we're naturally really competitive with each other. And I don't think men have to do that as much because I think in their mind, they're literally like, I just have to beat out like this other person. It's not like there's like any other barrier than that. So I'm going to challenge that a little bit. I agree with what you're saying. I think, I honestly do feel that the white male and men in general also feel the competition that we're talking about. I think that is kind of one of the inherent issues with our society that we'll see. Um, But I do feel kind of another thing you touched on is the women or the, you know, person of color, like those people, they're fighting for a single slot. There's yeah. one slot for that. And the white male may have, in the case of the Mercury 7, seven slots. In the case of Apollo, there was just under, just above 30 slots. Like, there was more than one slot. They're still highly competitive, but there was more than one slot. And I think kind of what happens is that competitiveness was inherently built into the system. And that's why we have the competitiveness now for women, for other different minorities, but instead of it being for a wider range, it is for a single slot and thus making it more competitive. I don't know if that well, makes sense. And I think but- that that, yeah, I mean, but I think that that competitiveness also stems a lot from this like whole devotion to the right stuff mentality, yes. right? Like there, there was competitiveness amongst white men that was driven by like this macho kind of culture. It's just that like race and gender were not one of the reasons for why it was a competitive process, which yeah. of course is the case for, a you lot know, of us. oh, this is going to be controversial too. Okay, so <laughs> like, you know, when you go to like a Mars society conference and literally like, there's a lot of people there who are frustrated because they're getting a little older in age and they're like, we should have already done this. I should have already seen this in my lifetime. And like, I'm starting to feel the same way, but about women's issues, like I'm starting to feel like I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, I'm getting older and this shit is no oh, bleep is not changing. (laughs) And that's why I said earlier in this, I was like, don't tell them lies because here's the thing. When I was a little girl, like I was also told that I could be anything that I wanted to be. Unfortunately, that. that didn't really pan out. I don't want this to continue happening. And then like, I don't want my daughter to look up and be like, oh, well, you didn't do anything. You didn't actually change anything. I still hope that things improve in my lifetime. Like, of course I want it to be better for her, but I also want it to be better for me, you know? And I think it's okay to admit that. Yes, I'm a woman, but I'm also like a very privileged individual. And so like, I, I understand that like, it's, it's way harder for other people. And so Mm -hmm. it's very frustrating to me because I can't, I can't even really imagine what it would be like in, in different circumstances, whether that be from like race or just like socioeconomically and things like that. So or just I having, I mean, your I want to time out real quick. Your husband has been insanely supportive of what you're doing. I mean, let alone all the other things, race, socioeconomic, but just having a husband that's supportive of that is probably making a world of difference that you don't have to also fight that battle too, that you can just go on to do these things. So I, yes. I hear what you're saying is like, I think about it sometimes and I'm like, I'm so glad I'm wearing. I also was told I could be whatever I want and I've become an engineer and I've got all these great dreams. But the reason why is because I feel like I've had to really tough out a lot of situations where a lot of people would have backed out. A lot of women, a lot of girls would have backed out by now. And mm-hmm. like it, it makes me really sad that 
it's almost like the tough survive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't no, want that mentality that anymore. Yeah. No, there's plenty of mediocre white men out there running around <laughs> living their dreams. I want everybody to have the opportunity to be mediocre. Okay. I want everybody to have that opportunity. <laughs> Um, I think that's important. And like, I mean, kind, you know, obviously kind of like ingest there a little bit, but not, but not really like why. Yeah. yeah it's like, why are there these unrealistic, impossible expectations for women, for people of color? Like it's- I've got two big things that I wanted to touch on before we wrap okay. this up. So the first one, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the Mercury 13. One of the things I touched on in the show was that John Glenn was one of the major people who spoke out against them. That basically was like the downfall of the Mercury 13. The other person was actually a woman. Her name was Jacqueline, Jackie Conkren, Conkren, I think that's how you say her last name. She was one of the top flyers before the Mercury 13. So like 1940s, 1950s, top flyer, female pilots, like she was amazing, celebrated by everyone. And she actually helped the Mercury 13. She came from very wealthy, like she she had the resources to push into this. She helped find these women. She was a great part of the Mercury 13 beginning. But then by the end, they sat in court and Jacqueline was across from them, literally saying she, as a woman, as a female pilot, did not believe that women should be going into space. Like she completely did a 180. There's a lot of discussion in the book about the Mercury 13, that this kind of the idea was that Jacqueline became jealous that she would never be a woman in space. So like her legacy would always be a female pilot, that she would never be a female astronaut. And so she kind of turned on the Mercury 13 to bring them back down. So with that kind of background, if you look at the character of Molly, you can kind of understand her tough skin. And this is something that I I think, Mm -hmm. you know, Britt, this is one of the things we talk about a lot is that a lot of the women in STEM the older women in STEM, the ones who are maybe like in their like, what, 40s, 50s, they've gone through this, they're getting close to retirement, but they oftentimes look down on the younger women women of STEM and they kind of make it harder on us because they had to go through so much. And I'm not trying to discredit what they had to go through. I can't even imagine trying to be a woman in STEM in the 80s or 90s, even in the early 2000s. I'm sure it was very tough, but this is the mentality that we really need to kill that I suffered, so you must suffer too. It hurts me to see the character of Jerry Cobb taking in this role of Jacqueline to kind of belittle Tracy and like yeah. further that of being like, I suffered, so you must, and like further that line. Personally, I like to believe maybe either. Jerry didn't do that. And like at the end, yeah. she kind of redeemed herself where she was like, okay, I see something in Tracy. Okay. Well, like maybe, maybe that's why her. she's called Molly and not Jerry. Maybe. And and that's completely you know, fair. But, but I think but this is a very interesting woman in STEM dynamic that we need to Yeah. Well, yeah, because like I've never understood that because like when people are like, oh, it's so hard for me. So like you need to suffer as well. No, it should be easier for everybody. Yeah, that you should be next. like clearing that's the path the for them because you know how yeah. much they suffer. Yeah. Yeah. That's I agree. the point. I've had the time where like it's COVID, right? Like we have to work from home and maybe I had to go into the office for something and obviously we're being safe. And I genuinely dreaded going to the office and I would rather work from home. I've had that, you know what I mean? And and that um, is not the not job good. you want. Yeah, no. that's not the job you want. With Celestial Citizen, like I work for myself, but I still <laughs> interact though with yes. people. I'm like, I still get that. And it's unfortunate because it's like, you know, I'm just, just a squirrel out here trying to get a nut, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just and other, it. other female squirrels should be helping you get that nut. The desert scene with her kind of walking around a lot of the things that Tracy, Tracy walking around, it really brought up a lot for me. And it's probably one of the reasons that I really teared up when they were reading the inspirational stuff from the girls and stuff is because I also had this emotional like tie to this of like the imposter syndrome that she was going through right there. I mean, I literally experienced it probably every day, even right now. Like I don't feel like I belong. And it comes from me from two sides, both being an engineer in a man's world. And then like a, a, a social media person, I'm not a big social media person and I don't necessarily identify as like the other influencers. I literally don't feel like I have a place. I feel like I'm not doing anything correctly right now. And like when she kind of was like going through that, like I just so resonated with her because I believe in her. Like this is a made up person. I believe in her with my whole heart that she could go to the moon if she wanted. Like I'm sure there's people that probably look at me and are like, yeah, that girl's going to space. You've said that yourself. Like you believe I have. So hard I, believe it. Yeah. I, believe I don't it. believe that. Like you guys need to understand. I don't you... believe that. <laughs> Bailey, I believe it. And you will, you will. 
yeah, no, and well. we can replay this and I can cry and it'll be a great time. But like, like when she was going through that and a lot of it is because of kind of the, the barriers that other people were putting up for her and it's not necessarily their fault or her fault, but she internalized them. And that's the biggest thing is when you start internalizing them and believing that you don't belong in this room, that what you're saying, what you're doing is not your best. I read this amazing book. This is now several years ago, but I think it was called like the confidence gap. And it was literally talking about how women, like a lot of the limitations that we place on ourselves or that we feel like others place on us. And like, it's not because we can't do it. It's just literally because there's a difference in confidence. And that starts very early from like how, you know, girls have historically been raised differently than boys. And so it's just like, there's this stuff that's like deeply ingrained in us, which is, it's hardwired. It's hard to change. It's so critical. It's so critical that we like allow girls and women to like build up their confidence because you're right. Like this imposter syndrome is it's constant. Like we constantly question ourselves like all the time. And then because of that, it's sort of like, I think we let this, like any comments kind of like really social media at work, yeah, all these different like things. Inter- it comes at you from every angle, honestly. Yes. Like, I don't think people understand that. Like if you were a, a not even man, like if you're just someone listening who doesn't understand like the struggle that not just women in STEM have, but like people in general have is that this stuff is coming at us from every angle at all times, like at work, at school, at, on social media, online from complete strangers. Like, I mean, yeah. this stuff is literally coming at us from all angles. And so it's, it's almost hard to actually ignore it. It's literally like you're in a fun house and there's like a big mirror and it's like every which way you look, you are <laughs> it's just you. It's just yeah. you. Like- <laughs> you like tra- but you were like trapped by the judgment and it's just like, it is um, wild. So if, if you yeah. want a visual image of imposter syndrome, it is standing in a fun house with a bunch of, of mirrors looking. Yes, that is it. Having that is a it panic right attack. There. Yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. Or, and, and what we need to transform it into is like less of that and more of like, remember in Star Wars when Ray is like in that like cavern and she, there's like yeah. a bunch of rays and she's like, and she like taps them and they like all turn out or like something like that. And it's like, yes, we need to be like a powerful army of rays. <laughs> That's there. what we need to aspire to. There you go. If you get one, if you get two things out of this podcast, it's to empower yourself through the power of Ray and the conserve water. Those are the two things we want you to remember. Yes. <laughs> I completely agree. Bailey, this has been fun. And we will catch you guys um on episode four, I guess. Hope y'all are still with us because I think we're talking about very important things, but this is really fun. And yeah, I can't wait for next week.